Before polls closed in Wisconsin's Republican primary election yesterday, Donald Trump stood in a room packed with supporters and promised them retribution. Now, he has done this a lot. But this time it wasn't retribution for his four criminal indictments. It wasn't for the half a billion dollars he owes in civil penalties. It wasn't for what he calls political persecution. This time, Trump suggested that President Biden's recognition of Trans Visibility Day on Easter weekend amounted to a persecution of Christians and promised they would see retribution on Election Day. Christian Visibility Day was Trump's poll closing message in Green Bay. And surprising exactly no one, the presumptive Republican nominee, then won that primary by a landslide. We don't know how much the message of Christian persecution influenced Trump's victory there, but we do know that Trump has managed to turn his Christian followers into politically pious voters, members of the Church of Trump. And those voters are motivated by issues like abortion to put their evangelical hero back in the White House. But that effort has been frustrated by the reality that even in red states like Ohio, efforts to enshrine the right to abortion into state constitutions have been wildly and consistently successful, largely because of the densely populated deep blue cities in those states. And so turning those cities less blue, maybe even purplish, is now a priority. Cities like Columbus, Ohio, where former Ohio State Buckeyes defensive lineman Joel Penton lives. In 2018, Penton launched a group called LifeWise Academy, which provides off-campus Bible studies to public elementary school students during the school day. It is raising serious questions about the separation of church and state. Penton has expanded his mission to put God back in the public school day, and he credits his newfound motivation to Ohio's victorious abortion ballot measure. When I see what just happened in my state uh, with the new oh. amendment in for Ohio for abortion, um, it is not only incredibly sad, it's also incredibly motivating. It makes uh, us realize with LifeWise, wow, our mission is all the more important. What other hope do we have but to inject the word of God into the hearts of the next generation? We see the fruit of taking it out of uh, a, a few generations, we've got to get it back to the next generation. Penton's LifeWise Academy is currently influencing the minds of public school kids in progressive cities like Columbus. But he wants his Bible studies company to reach every public school in America, which means that Blue Islands, cities like Tampa and Philadelphia, Las Vegas and Phoenix and Atlanta, those blue islands in red states and swing states like Florida and Pennsylvania, Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia, they could be swayed by LifeWise. And that, that really could determine what happens at the ballot box. NBC News correspondent Antonia Hilton went to Columbus, Ohio to learn more. As classmates head to the library, this group of Whitehall School District students in Ohio put on matching shirts, board a bus, and head half a mile down the road to church. There, elementary students like Emmanuel and Savannah Brady pray Amen. and study scripture. He approached the Philistine. This is LifeWise Academy, a nonprofit bringing the Bible back into the public school day. The learning really helps you learn about Jesus and what happened in the past. How popular would you say it is at school? Mainly like the whole class is like over at LifeWise. Ohio mom Sarah Myers says that LifeWise does exert pressure. She's a Christian with a daughter in a school partnering with them. No, she won't ever let her take me. part though. It is all above board until it's not. No school staff person does anything until they do. Chapters promised ice cream or popcorn parties if kids got their friends to sign up. Another Ohio mom sent NBC News this note her child received from a classmate on LifeWise letterhead, pre-written to say, my favorite part of class is the classmate writing everything and inviting the child to join LifeWise. LifeWise told NBC News that like many youth groups, they offer incentives for students and families to learn more and that they are no different from other organizations that advocate for the policies they believe in. What do you think LifeWise is trying to do? Influence, slant, if you will, public schools. Do you think church has a place in school? 
Yeah, I mean, we tr we're trying to bring churches back into schools for a long time. Some of these sessions take place when library periods would be happening in school. Mm -hmm. and are you worried about your kids missing out on that experience? Not at all. I mean, there's 39 books in the Old Testament and 27 books in the New Testament. LifeWise Academy, an Ohio-based Christian nonprofit, found a legal way to offer Bible lessons to thousands of school children during the school day. Their initial goal was to serve 25 schools by 2025. But by the start of this year, they had already set up chapters in more than 300 schools in a dozen states teaching the gospel, gospel to 35,000 public school students during school hours on a weekly basis. Joining me now is Antonia Hilton, NBC News correspondent. Antonia, every time you visit here, I, I get a distressing uh, picture of what's happening elsewhere in the country, and this, this, is, this is not any exception. I'm sorry to stress no, you out. No, it's really important and essential reporting. And I, I just wonder how, first of all, how is it, for people who you know, are a little bit unclear as to how this arrangement works, when and how are these kids being taken out of public school and sent to Bible study effectively? Yes, and I'm, I'm sure people want to know, too, Wait, one more time, how is this legal? Yeah. So LifeWise has the support, frankly, of a number of Supreme Court rulings, and they're able to make this work through three, three things. It has to be optional, so kids have to opt in. You can't have a school district that's forcing everyone to be in LifeWise. It can't be on the school property. So usually LifeWise sets up at a church that's really close by. I mean, the one we went to was about a half a mile ride. It's like nothing. And then... You know, it can't take place when there would be a math or a science class, something seen as essential. So kids are coming out of things like recess or in the case of the students you just saw there, they're leaving their library periods. And in that district, about 50 percent of the kids are leaving. Wow. So, you know, you're seeing a large portion of, you know, the classmates or friends that you might be with in that section leave at that time. And, and it does have an impact, at least visually, on the school environment. Well, and they're all wearing their red shirts and their popcorn parties that LifeWise is having. And then there are these notes that these kids pass each other about how great and how fun LifeWise is. I mean, I just wonder if this is not running afoul of sort of First Amendment stuff, like whether or not there is not whether or not there's kind of a gray area here that may be further explored by people who find this questionable in terms of the separation. I talked all state. about that gray area with the administrator at the school district to say, how are you walking this tightrope? Yeah. You know, are you worried about lawsuits? Is this a stress for you? And he acknowledged they are walking a very fine line here. Schools can't encourage or establish a religion. Yeah. But they also can't stop kids from expressing their faith. And so with these instruction policies, these released time religious instruction policies is what you see at the district level here and states like Ohio have allowed their schools to do this. It means that once those policies are in place, school districts kind of have to put their hands up and allow programs life like LifeWise. And other groups could do this too. It's just that LifeWise seems to have kind of figured out the, yeah, the, the, the franchise here. model. Yeah. yeah. But they are supposed to, without encouraging or discouraging it, allow the kids to go and then to come back. The trouble comes when we talk to people in these communities, parents and observers who are getting concerned about LifeWise. They tell us that that all sounds fine, but in practice, it's messier than that. Yeah. They have seen administrators hand out paperwork and flyers about LifeWise. In one school district in Ohio, uh, a tutor gave a Hindu student information about LifeWise. And that's interpreted by a lot of parents, even Christian parents. I mean, kids who, uh, with kids who go to Sunday school yeah. and are part of this community, they are getting uncomfortable and they feel like there is this kind of encroachment happening that even if it all looks clean on paper, isn't how it actually functions well, on the ground. And isn't that sort of the point of LifeWise? I mean, we had that sound from the, the founder saying, you know, he, he got particularly motivated by o Ohio's, you know, enshrining of abortion rights. And there, there is, they, politics is a part of this, right? It's not just to spread the gospel. There is an end to this. There is, an, there is a goal here at the end of the day. An, another blurry line, right? Yeah. Because LifeWise itself is not a political organization. These are elementary school students. In my observations, I haven't seen them talk about politics or tell those kids to vote a particular way, of yeah. course. But when you see who they associate with, you do start to raise questions, right? So LifeWise last summer had a teacher summit and Patriot Mobile, a group that many of your viewers would be familiar yes, with because we've yes. talked about it a few times. They are a openly far-right Christian organization that 
supported and funded uh, this event. Then you see uh, Joel Penton, the founder, go on a program. And it's, you know, you start to see that kind of political association. You see the, the, the sort of roots or maybe the treetops of where this is all going or coming from. Um, Antonia, amazing reporting. NBC News correspondent Antonia Hilton, uh, thank you for your time tonight. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.